manner of salutation this should be. Mm -hmm. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. Now don't be afraid. You have found favor with God. The same angel talking to her that was talking to Joseph. He's talking to both of them. Right? Go ahead and read. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus. It said, you shall conceive in your womb and bring forth a son and you shall call his name Jesus. Right? Go ahead and read. He shall be great. And he shall be called the son of the highest. And the Lord shall give unto him the throne of his father David. The throne of his what, David? His father David. His father David, right? Question, big baby. Did Joseph have sex with Mary? No. no. Not at this point. So how can David be the father of this unborn child without Joseph being involved? Only if Mary is a descendant of David. That's the only way. Because we know Joseph didn't touch him. Is it of his father David? And you're going to read this next. Go ahead and read. He shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. And he shall reign over the house of uh, Jacob, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. Now watch what Mary asked this person. Go ahead. Then said Mary unto the angel, How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? How, man, how can my messianic Hebrew brothers miss this? She said, How can this be possible, being I have never had sex with a man? She didn't mean noble man as an acknowledge of the man. That don't make sense. Because she knew a father. She walked around in Israel. She knew men. She had men friends, obviously. You follow what I'm saying? She meant sexually. She said, how can this be possible seeing I know no man? How can I have a child and he's going to be of the house of David? Seeing I have known no man. Notice that the angel Gabriel is telling her that Jesus would be from the house of David without no man being involved. So how can he be a descendant and be of the house of David without no man being involved? Only if his mama is from the house of David. Two people? That's the only way. That's why she said, how can it be possible seeing I know no man? And I'm going to show y'all that. Go ahead and read. And the angel answered and said unto her, the Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. Did he say this is going to be possible because you and Joseph are going to have sex and that's what that's what's going to happen? Did he say you're going to creep with some guy in the back door and Joseph is going to think he's healed? Did he say that? He said the Holy Ghost, y'all. The Bible, the New Testament, is very clear that Jesus' birth was miraculous. He's very clear on that. Any Messianic Hebrew that's trying to tell you that Mary had sex with Joseph is just not reading this Bible. The questions are all at them. The reactions of Joseph and Mary. Joseph thinking Mary cheated on him. Mary asking the angel, how can I have a baby without having sex with a man? All of this is obvious. Are both of these people stupid? Did they forget they were having sex with each other? Or is Mary naive and don't know that it takes a man and a woman to make a baby? Her mom and dad never told about the birds and the bees? Come on, y'all. Y'all smarter than that. Don't let no idiot teacher try to come along and make you disregard what your book is obviously telling you. How can this be saying I know not a man? Look at the question these people are asking. Said the Holy Ghost gonna come upon you, the power of God. Hey, Angel Gabriel basically told me this is gonna happen through God's power. It's gonna be a miracle. But the point is, the angel told her that this child was going to be of the house of David without Joseph being involved. How can this guy be of the house of David without Joseph being involved? We only got one parent left. Mary. Only through historically, that's what people believe. That she was from the house of David. Before all this philosophy and stuff came on the scene. Right? But we just plainly read that, right? But now, let's go over to chapter 2. Let me show y'all something else. Luke chapter 2. If you just pay attention to what this Bible is telling you, it gives you enough clues for you to see where these people from. I don't think I do pay attention. Why this right here? This, we don't read this a million times. And it's going to tell you right here in this verse where Mary is from. Who lineage is she from? Watch this. Luke chapter 2, pick it up in verse 1. Go ahead. And it came to pass in those days that there were that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. Now there came out a decree from Caesar Augustus that the whole world should be taxed. Mm -hmm. Everybody in the Roman world had to pay tax. Go ahead and read. But watch how they had to go about doing it. Go ahead. 
And this taxing was first made by Cyrenius, when, when, I'm sorry, when Cyrenius was governor of Syria. And all went to be taxed, everyone into his own city. Now listen to this. All went to be taxed, everyone into his own city. Everybody, men and women had to pay tax. He said everybody went to his own city to be taxed. That's how they rested. You had to rest in your own city to pay tax. Where you was from, right? Go ahead and read. And Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth unto Judea, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house of of the house and in, engaged and lineage. in lineage of David. Now why did he go to Bethlehem? Because he was of the house and lineage of David. That's why he went, right? He had to register in Bethlehem because everybody who was from the house and lineage of David had to register there. Because they were their home, uh, they were their home city. So if you went to register in Bethlehem, where were you from? From the house and lineage of David. Simple, right? Read the next verse. To be tacked with Mary, his spouse wife. Oh, to be tacked with who? Mary, his spouse wife. Go ahead. Being great with child. So where did Mary go to register? So where was she from? From the same place. You got the house and lineage of David. Same exact place. Same exact place. Mm -hmm. He said to be taxed with Mary. They were taxed together. Mm -hmm. So where was she from? The same exact place. Same place. Remember, when he made this decree, she went there with him. They all went to their homeland. Why did they say Joseph will? Because he said because he was the house and lineage of David. To be taxed. Will Mary, his false wife, being great with child, his, his pregnant wife, she was there too. Don't try to say, well, she was just going with him when he went. No, you can read another place where we're going to read. Well, Mary traveled by herself to do stuff. She didn't have to be with Joseph to do that. It said every man went to his own. That was the law. They all had to do it. You follow what I'm saying? And you can't read anywhere in this Bible about Mary going anywhere else. So if she went to... Bethlehem, that means she was of the house and lineage of David, just like her husband, because that's where she went. It said to be taxed with Mary. Didn't it say to be taxed with her? It didn't say she was with her when he got taxed. It said to be taxed with her. Like, I said, I'm being taxed with Big Baby. That means we've been taxed together. Right? So where was she from? See, when you just read the Bible and just pay attention, it tells you if you're just really looking close enough. So, yes. Jesus was a flesh and blood descendant of David through his mother Mary. But let me show y'all another, uh, more evidence of that. Because like we know, we know Joseph didn't touch her, right? We know that, right? Let's go to, still in Luke, turn back to chapter 1. This is when Mary visited Elizabeth, her cousin. This is the wife of John the Baptist, his father. The wife of John the Baptist's father, Zachariah. Luke chapter 1 and verse 39. Don't forget, y'all, everybody had to go to their own city to be taxed. It told you why they went. Mary went there with him to be taxed with him. Didn't it say that? To be taxed with him. She rested in the same city he did, which means she was, uh, either she was from there or her family was from there. That's what that means. Can't get around that. It is what it is. Right? But I'm just showing y'all the, the key to let you know that it, may, it links Mary to David without Joseph being involved. Just like when the angel told her that David was going to be Jesus' father without Joseph being involved. The only way they could be popular is if she's from the lineage of David. Right? Luke chapter 1, verse 39, read. And Mary arose in those days and went into the hill country with haste unto the city of Judah. Mm -hmm. And entered into the house of Zacharias and saluted Elizabeth. See, this is when she know that, uh, first found out that she was pregnant, right? So she saluted her cousin Elizabeth. Now, you know, they started talking and she prophesied some stuff, Mary. And then John the Baptist, his father, Zachariah, he prophesied some stuff. Now watch what he say about this child. Remember, Joseph ain't even here. She's by herself. Joseph's not even here with her. Right? And we know Joseph didn't touch her. Right? Watch what he says. Skip down to verse 67 and read. Watch what Zachariah says about this baby that Mary's going to give birth to. Go ahead. And his father, Zachariah, was filled with the Holy Ghost. Prophesied, saying, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he have visited and redeemed his people, mm -hmm. and have raised up in horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David. He said, have raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David? The baby ain't even been born yet, and Joseph ain't even there. So how can this baby be in the house of his servant David? Through Mary. Mary. That's the only way. 
Don't have nothing to do with it. This woman is visiting her kid, folks, by herself, and this man is saying, God has raised up this baby in the house of his servant David. All the person with that will marry. Right? Says nothing about Joseph. He didn't say, do Joseph. Because they knew she was born of a virgin. Remember, this guy prophesied because he got the Holy Spirit. He knows the truth. Through the house of his servant David. How did Joseph want to help? Through Mary. He said, more proof that Mary was of the house of David. It's right there. She went and registered in the same place. The angel Gabriel told her that this baby was going to be uh, from the house of David. Now Zachariah prophesied that he's going to be from the house of David. And none of this stuff involved Joseph. So the only way he can be from the house of David without Joseph being involved is if his mama from the house of David. That's simple. And everybody knows that if you couldn't find your father's genealogy, you went by your mother's genealogy. That's how it went in ancient Israel. Your mother's genealogy determines some stuff too. If the father was not available, you went by your mother's genealogy. But Jesus still had legal ties through the throne through Joseph's genealogy, but at the same time, since he was not Joseph's biological son, he avoided that curse that came upon Jeconiah's seed. This is what's going on in your Bible. This is the absolute Bible truth of what happened. But we don't know because we keep listening to the elders who think they know what they're talking about. But let's keep it moving. Because let me show you something else. And this is the most obvious one right here. Let's go to Luke chapter 3. This is just more proof right here. Luke chapter 3, pick it up at verse 23. That's right here, very interesting right here. This is about Jesus' lineage. Go ahead. And Jesus himself began to be about 30 years of age. Keeping in mind, y'all, that Luke is aimed at Mary's side of the story while Matthew was aimed at Joseph. Go ahead and read. Being as was supposed. He said, being as was supposed. Go ahead. The son of Joseph, which was the son of Heli. Heli or Heli. Now, you got some people who will say, there's a contradiction in your Bible. Matthew said that, you know, Joseph's lineage traced back from his father named Jacob, and it takes you um, to um, Solomon through his uh, son, uh, Rehoboam. But Luke takes you back to Solomon through his son, Nathan. So that's a contradiction in genealogy. Well, it's not a contradiction in genealogy, people. If you do any ancient research, you'll see that the Jews were real meticulous about genealogy. Josephus tells you that. They were real meticulous. There's no way these two genealogies could have uh, existed next to each other if they didn't coincide with each other, meaning this man had rights to two genealogies. But what I'm interested in before I move any further is that word translated as was supposed. Now, how come when it comes to it says Jesus himself began to be about 30 years of age, being as was supposed the son of Joseph. It's a clue right now that man, this man is not this man's literal child. It's not his biological that child. What have you ever read in the book when they talk about anybody else? Abraham had Isaac. Show me anywhere in the book where it said, and Isaac, you know, began who was supposed to be the son of Abraham. It ain't never any question about these other people, but when it comes to Jesus and Joseph, all this ass was supposed because he was not his biological father, man. But let me look, let me show y'all something. We're gonna go to the strong court. We're gonna look at supposed. So let me show y'all a little hint. This ain't actually talking about Joseph's lineage. We're going to 3543 in the Greek section of the strong concordance. 3543. Got to look this stuff up. You a messy on the Hebrew and you just reading over all this stuff. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. Any messy on the Hebrew that's walking around teaching that Joseph is Jesus' biological father should just be ashamed of themselves. Should just be ashamed. You're not even reading this Bible. You cannot twist this book to say other than what it's saying. That's just idiotic. Now, my non messy on the Hebrew, I understand. You don't believe the New Testament, so you just like screw it all. But my messy on the Hebrews who claim they believe this, how can you be messing this up? It's really simple. It's really simple. Too simple. 3543. But people got an agenda. I keep telling y'all. That's why a lot of people have a problem with ABT because ABT don't got an agenda. Our only agenda is truth. But everybody else got an agenda. They want you to think a certain way and believe a certain way. I don't care how you think. I don't care what you believe. I'm just going to put the truth out there. You can take it or leave it. I'm not going to lose a wink of sleep over it. 
But you cannot go against the word of God because you don't like what it says. If the book says he was born of a virgin and it bears out that it means a literal virgin that never had sex, then that's just what it is. If you don't believe it, put the book down. Find another religion. But don't try to change the book. That's what people do. When they don't like something the Bible says, they try to change it. That's a very self-deceiving way to live. It says what it says, people. I got to go with what it says. Now, whether I believe it or not, that's another matter. But I got to go with what it says. And I do believe it. Right? 35, 43. This is in the Greek. Now, this is the word. It is no mid zone. From 3551, properly, to do by law. Hmm. To do by law. He said Jesus began as was supposed, or by law, the son of Joseph. What does all this mean? The by law, the son of Joseph. In ancient Israel, when a man married a wife, he took on the lineage of her father. So I said by law. But let me finish reading this, right? It says, in other words, to accustom by extension to deem or regard. To regard by law, people. This was not, this was not Joseph's lineage through his biological father. Notice that which was the son of Eli, while Matthew says that Jacob begot Joseph. Begot means you actually had sex with somebody and gave birth to this kid. Right. Son of can mean literal biological father, adopted father, or son-in-law. It can mean any of them. But let me just show y'all something. So what we're going to do, we're going to go to the Smith Bible Dictionary. And we're going to look up, uh, we're going to look on the session called The Genealogy of Jesus Christ. We're going to take a historical look at this. We're going to page 210. And we're going to show you historically who they believe the father of um, Mary was. Let me show you all this. This is on the genealogy of Jesus Christ. This is the mm -hmm. Smith's Bible Dictionary. This is on the section titled uh, Genealogy of Jesus Christ. Right? We're going to start from this section right here where it says, God at Lange and many others take the ground that Luke gives the genealogy of Mary, rendering Luke 3 and 23 thus, Jesus being as was supposed, the son of Joseph, but in reality, the son of Eli. In this case, Mary, as declared in the Targum, listen to this, Mary, as declared in the Targum, we got a, a source given us here, so we got to look that source up, right? He said, Mary, as declared in the Targum, was the daughter of Eli, and Eli was the grandfather of Jesus. Mary's name was omitted because ancient sentiment did not comport with the mention of the mother as the genealogical link. Hmm. Ancient sentiment did not comport with the mother as a link to genealogy. In other words, once that woman got married, her husband took over her genealogy. But it said the Targums say the same thing. What are the Targums? Got to look it up. Sister, brother, we don't go to the Holman Bible Dictionary. And we're going to look up Targum. This is page 1322. So you got to get real deep. You got to study and do a lot of research. You got to be all over the place to get to the bottom of this. But this is what we do at Absolute Bible Truth. We get all over the place. I don't tell y'all what I think. I tell y'all what I can read and what I can research. People who are in this room right now who have been listening to me for an extended period of time, they know, they tell everybody, Josh, don't claim it unless he can prove it. Everybody know that. If I can't prove it, it will never come out my mouth. You will never hear me teach it. If I can't prove it, it will never come out my mouth. And I'm just showing y'all through history what the people thought through history said according to the Targums. Let's see what the Targums are. So what is that, Josh? The Targums? What? Some of y'all may already know, but I'm going to look it up anyway. It said, it said in the Targums that she's called the daughter of Eli. That Eli was her, own, was her father, right? Very interesting, right? Here we are, 1322. Uh, Targum, <clears throat> and it says, early translation of the Bible into Aramaic. Oh, so it's an Aramaic translation of the Bible. That's what the Targum is, right? The native language of Palestine and Babylon in the first century A.D. Targum, in its verbal Hebrew form, means to explain, to translate, right? The most important of these translations still in existence is Targum Onkelos which was probably read weekly in synagogue service 
from a relatively early date. The Targums are not simply translations. They're not simply translations. Um, the Targums are not simply translations, but seem to include a large amount of biblical commentary that perhaps reflects sermons in Jewish Palestinian synagogues. Therefore, the material is of interest to New Testament scholars who attempt to understand the Judaism of which Jesus was a part. Is of interest to the New Testament scholars. We're New Testament scholars. That just means somebody who studied New Testament. And the Targums were a translation of the Bible in Aramaic with explanation. In other words, this is an ancient book. You know what I'm saying? Um, this is where stuff like the Talmud and um, the Mishnah, you know, that the Pharisees and stuff believe. And in the Talmud and the Mishnah, they condemn Jesus as being a false prophet, but they still tell you that Eli was Mary's father. It's a historical testimony of who Mary's father was. Even when you get to the early so-called church fathers like Origen and Justin and Augustine, they all maintain that Eli was Mary's father because as far back as you can go, the ancient belief was that Eli was Mary's father. Everybody knew that. So this is just historical proof that that lineage is referring to Mary. And if you read that lineage all the way back, which we about to do, you'll see something. Let me show you something, though. Let's go back to Luke. You should already be there. Luke chapter 3. Pick it up at verse 37. Now notice in Matthew, it started with Abraham and it went to Joseph. In Luke, it starts with Joseph, but it goes beyond Abraham. Watch what it does. Because remember, Luke is written from Mary's perspective. You follow what I'm saying? Watch what it tells you about him. Go ahead and read. Which was the son of Methuselah, which was the son of Enoch, which was the son of Jared, which was the son of Meliel, which was the son of Cainam, which was the son of Enoch, which was the son of Seth, which was the son of Adam, which was the son of God. So we start from Jesus and we end up with Jesus being the son of who? God. Why do we end up with Jesus being the son of God in Luke, but we end up with Jesus being the son of Abraham in Matthew? Because Matthew is focused on the legal aspect of Jesus' lineage, his right to the throne. Luke is focused on his spiritual, supernatural aspect as being the son of God. That's why it takes you to him being the son of God. Remember, the angel told him that the Holy One in you will be called the son of God. This is written from Mary's perspective. This lineage is Mary's. This goes back to Nathan. You follow what I'm saying? Um, the other one in Matthew goes back to Solomon. So in order for Jesus to have right to the throne, he had to be a descendant of Solomon. He is a descendant of Solomon, but not by blood, so he died the curse. But the, the scriptures, the prophets also said he had to be the seed of David according to the flesh. There go his mother. God covered all prophets and still made Jesus the, the, um, avoid the curse. See, that's what you think. Satan thought he won. God pulled the virgin birth off and that just pissed Satan off. Man, goodness. Nobody saw it coming. Even the um, New Testament writers of that time, who was expecting Messiah, had to be wondering, man, how in the world is he going to get the Messiah here? Israel messed up. So what God do? God stepped in and took a woman and made her, be, um, made her have a baby without sex with a man. That's how God got beyond the curse of Jeconiah, and that's how God fixed Israel breaking his covenant. That's how he did it. But if you ain't reading your Bible, you ain't going to see this. You ain't going to catch any of this. You know, just keep listening to these lying elders and preachers who try to tell you, man, Joseph had sex with Mary. Yes, keep believing that Joseph had sex with Mary to give birth to Jesus. You keep following that Antichrist. You know, the Messiah that can't prosper, the, the Messiah that's destined to fail. That's not like the Antichrist to me. <laughs> son of perdition. That means son of destruction. Somebody who was born to die. That's what son of perdition means. Look it up. Son of destruction. That's what it means, right? You don't even understand it. That's what you t uh, preach to people. A lot of these black Hebrews don't even understand they're preaching the Antichrist to people. They have no clue when they tell people that Joseph had sex with Mary to give birth to Jesus. They ain't got a clue, right? But let me show you something else because it just keeps going. Now let's deal with this word virgin. And we only got three more after that. Let's deal with this word. Let's go to Isaiah. I got to say this for last. Because they love it. That word virgin means a woman that never has sex. Doesn't it? Doesn't it mean that? 
And let's look it up. Let's do something that people don't do. Let's look some stuff up. Isaiah 7. Isaiah 7. Pick it up at verse 14. Let me just read this. I'm not even going to get into the double fulfillment of this. I'm just dealing with the word version. Another class I deal with the double fulfillment of this. Right? The word version. Go ahead and read. Isaiah 7 and 14. Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. It said a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and call his name Emmanuel. That's what it said, right? Mm -hmm. Let's go to the strong card and look at the word translated virgin here. We're going to 59, 59 in the Hebrew section. 59, 59. You know, you know, he, um, you know they used the wrong word when they translated virgin into the Greek. They use the word that means a woman that never had sex. But in the Hebrew, it just means a young man. Well, okay. You know, it do mean young man. I'm not, I'm not kicking against that. There's only one thing you're leaving out, though. 59, 59. And here is the word. The word is Alma. Feminine of 59, 58, alas, which means a woman. As veil or private, damsel, maid, virgin. Funny how it don't say anything about sex or, or nothing, mm. does it? Don't say nothing about sex, don't say nothing about never had sex, none of that, right? Okay, cool. Now, let me show y'all a little something. Let's go to Genesis chapter 24. Let me show y'all something. They like to play on that word virgin. Don't, don't, don't play the Hebrew word game with me. You'll lose. <laughs> Folks kill when they try to play that. Don't, don't do that. You'll lose. Genesis 24 and 14. They love playing that. The old covenant Hebrews love doing that. See, they use the wrong version. That New Testament, they use that word virgin to mean uh, a woman that they have sex. They can hold on to their paganism concept of a God uh, having uh, sex with a mortal woman and giving birth to a half human, half God. But it don't say that God has sex with Mary. It says that Paul made a present. Right? It don't mention anything about sexual intercourse. God, and when it says God power, it didn't mean God just said it and it was done. That's all it means. It's like God to have sex with the earth to make it. He just said, let there be an earth. You know what I'm saying? Let there be light. Let this woman be pregnant with our child. That's how it happened. He just spoke it and it happened. That's all God got to do, y'all. Genesis 24, verse 14. You're talking about Isaac and Rebecca. Watch what he says. Go ahead. Let it come to pass that the damsel who I shall say, let down thy pitcher, I pray thee, that I may drink. And she shall say, drink, and, drink, and I will give thy camel drink also. Mm -hmm. let, the, let the same be let the same be she that thou hast appointed for thy servant Isaac. Mm -hmm. And here and thereby shall I know that thou hast showed kindness unto my master. Mm -hmm. And it came to pass, before he had done speaking that, behold, Rebecca came out, who was born to... Bethuel, son of Milcah, mm -hmm. the wife of Nahar, Abraham's brother, mm -hmm. with her picture upon her shoulder. Mm -hmm. And the damsel was very fair to look upon, a virgin. He said the damsel was very fair to look upon, a virgin. Go ahead and read. Neither had any man known her. So we know what it say, neither have any man known her. That means what? That means slept with her. Never slept with her. Didn't, her. didn't Mary say the same thing about Joseph? So how can a Messianic Hebrew read this and think that it meant that Rebecca never had sex, but it says the same thing in the New Testament about Mary, and they still think that she slept with Joseph. Same thing. How do people do this? Yeah, you can't eat it. You can't, you can't eat it too. Go ahead and read. But that ain't even my point. Go ahead. She went down to the well and filled her pitcher and came up. So we call her a virgin, right? It's a different word translated virgin here. We're going to go to 1322 in the Hebrew section. We remember all of them. They say nothing about no sex, did it? Nothing at all, right? 